So Kevin Samuels is an image consultant and YouTuber who basically makes his bones uh, or his content ref, uh, revolves around, uh, in my opinion, telling the truth to men and women about where they lie in a sexual marketplace and educating women on what men really want. Uh, and if you look at his older content, it was basically uh, focused on men telling them how to get their shit together. And so, amazingly enough, this content has been deemed very controversial. Kevin Samuels have uh, been attacked and talked down to uh, by, uh, by uh, Dr. Umar Johnson of uh, building a school but not really building a school fame. Uh, and even DJ Envy from the world famous uh, Breakfast Club uh, talking to him about uh, just saying that, actually uh, questioning his sexuality, saying that he's gay. Uh and just saying that, like, something that was like, or what the kids say, 100% cap that he's seen him out in front of a store uh, soliciting or, uh, or begging for attention, or he's seen him not really shopping. And, uh, you know, of course, Kevin, Kevin Samuels uh, debunked that, uh, which is odd because uh, there's no way that uh, DJ Envy, uh, such, such a prestigious person who has uh, real estate investments and by any counts is a high value uh, man himself, would really talk about. Uh, even care about with Kevin Samuels. So, you know, the, the question is, why are so many trigger, many people triggered by Kevin Samuels content? And here is my take on it. Kevin Samuels is uh, telling the truth that men know for years, that men value things differently than women do. And uh, we live in this fantasy world now, uh, really pushed by media and that men and women are the same and that we value the same things and that we're going to be able to do the same things. And that's absolutely not true. If men and women value the same thing, then there would be nothing called divorce. There would be no such thing as people breaking up. And so the number one thing, men and women value totally different things. And I agree with this hundred percent. Men value the outside women. Uh, uh, and you know, the, we value uh, certain things in women. Like the first thing we're attracted to is uh, how a woman looks. And by the way, the first thing a woman is attracted to is how a man looks, but how we show affection is totally different to how a woman shows affection. For instance, a man shows affection by supporting and securing. And women show uh, affection by uh, nurturing. That's just that's just the way uh, we are, right? And there's nothing better than when that relationship works out. Uh, I can say that from experience. I can also say there's nothing worse when it doesn't work out because I can also say that by experience. Uh, so I'm like a lot of Kevin Samuel's content is really focused off of educating women to what men want. Now, why is that bad and why is that necessary? Because right now in society, men are, men look at what women want all the time. And we all know this, women want somebody who's tall, dark, handsome, make six figures and and uh, will support them, uh, but also be understanding, uh, available 100% of the time when they want to do so. Apparently the six figures just fucking gets made by itself somewhere, and, you know, so, uh, and, and just a lot of, fantasy bs that you can have everything you want in one person to be happy and what kevin samuels is really saying is that you go back to the old school uh yes relationships weren't perfect uh and let's take out the extremities like you know getting beat or or, or getting you know, berated but if a man was providing for you if he slipped tripped and fell relationships didn't break up like that especially in a black community in a black community we were the most married community until the 70s. Well, I just want you to think about that. That's within my lifetime. I'm not 50 years old yet. So we were the most married community since uh, up to that time. And how did this go astray? Well, we could say a lot of things went astray. But one of the things that went astray is that the notion that like a black man had to be everything or a couple had to be everything for it to be successful. You know, a couple had to be perfect for it to be successful. And one thing that uh, if I when I talk to like people who've been married for 50 years, they said it was never perfect. A matter of fact, it, it, a lot of times there was infidelity. A lot of times men slipped up and were in, uh, and, and fucked around on their wives. I'm not excusing that. It's absolutely hor horrible to in jeopardize your union. But let me tell you something. When a man fucks around on a woman, and this is just the truth, and whether you like it or not, it's not exactly an emotional thing. It's an emotional thing for a woman. Uh, a guy is just fucking around, right? Now, when a man finds a woman that he really likes, it's really hard for him to stray. Right now, I'm totally happy in my relationship. I don't look at anybody, anybody else that way. Do I notice other women? Yeah. 
I mean, a woman walks by, she looks good, I don't may notice her, but uh, it doesn't cross my mind uh, to do anything about it, even if I could or if I can't. It's just, I mean, I, uh, I mean, quite honestly, I'm just too fucking busy because I'm busy earning a living. I'm busy earning the money that I need to earn, making the content that I make, teaching martial arts that I teach, producing music. I have like five different gigs going on at the same time. Absolutely no way that I have time for an extra side relationship. That's just not something that I want to do at this point in my life. And it's not something that I want to do. Uh, I, I find it that in order for me to focus on being successful, I just have one woman in my life. She's taking care of everything I need, and that's how it goes. And that's the biggest thing that that women, I think, fail to understand about Kevin Samuels. What he's saying is things that accountability that has really usually been turned on a man. For honest, for first thing and just honestly, uh, single mothers and single uh, unwed mothers have been blamed on uh, men in society for the last 40 years, right? So, but it takes two to tangle, but besides it takes two to tangle, something that's very true, women control access to sex. They control, unless in a case uh, of force of, of rape or sexual assault, which we're not talking about that, we're talking about just relationships. They control whether a man has sex with them, whether there's a condom on a penis, with the morning after pill, whether they, they to carry the baby to the term or with abortion. There's a lot of ways that women are responsible for that. So if it's against your religion, then you shouldn't be having sex not married. I mean, that's just the way it is. If you are going to have sex not married, the person should be wearing a condom. You control that. You control them going into, hey, no sex without a condom. Trust me, I've been in many situations like that. If you want to wear a condom or not, what you do is you put on the rubber because you want to get laid as a guy. All right. Uh, if you do happen to have sex without a condom, there's the morning after pill. And then, of course, there's uh, the final measure, which is abortion. Women control all of that. Men have no say in that. Like a, a man can't, uh, a woman control that. Men don't have a choice to say, well, if you're not, if you're, I'm not going to fuck you uh, if I have to wear a condom. A woman can say, all right, don't fuck me then. A man usually wants to sex more than a woman. He'll, he will uh, capitulate and put on a condom. Uh, if they do have sex without a condom and there's an accident, like, you know, they he planned to pull out or whatever, and they're not, women have the morning after pill that's available, which probably the way the man will probably happily buy if he doesn't want to have a kid. So the whole notion of single mothers being solely the responsibility of the man, which is how it's portrayed in a black community normally, is total, complete bullshit. It's total, complete bullshit, right? It's actually a woman's choice to have for a man to have sex and a woman's choice to have an abortion or not and a woman's choice for contraceptive so i'm not saying that it's a hundred percent a woman's issue i'm saying that we need to reevaluate the blame metrics here and at least make it 50 50 and stop looking at men like they're just abandoning children all over the country now so that's another thing so now let's talk about the thing that really pisses off people about kevin samuels and it's that do you qualify for a high value man and this is the problem with society right now women in general think that they can have it all and they think that what they value men value so you see a woman says hey i make a hundred thousand two hundred thousand three hundred thousand dollars a year i'm rich i don't need a man for anything Okay, then why do you yearn for a man? Oh, because I would like to have a relationship and this that. Well, understand that the man that you're looking for, he's not interested if you want a man making six figures, seven figures. He's not interested in how much money you make. As a matter of fact, if you're not going to be cooperative and get on his agenda, he would rather just get with somebody who makes less money. Who will do that? Just like you, you're making a lot of money uh, as, as a lady. If, if you are going to make the majority of the money, you're going to want your agenda adhered to, right? And so you're going to have to get with somebody who makes less money. That's a total and complete trade-off that I understand totally. Here is the problem. Women don't understand that trade-off. And not all women, but just the majority of women. And that's what Kevin Samuel says. What he says is that you're a PhD, you make a bunch of money, and you should be able to have this fairy tale relationship like the Huxtables on the Cosby show where 
this power couple where I'm a doctor and he's a lawyer and we both work 17 hours a fucking day, but somehow we're raising our children and we're with no nanny, <laughs> you know, and we're doing a great job raising our kids. Yes, it can be done. Okay, get the fuck out of here. I barely have time to wipe my ass when I'm working and I'm just trying to figure out, you know, I barely have time to get to the gym, wipe my ass, do martial arts and do everything I'm supposed to do in a day. There's no way I would be raising a bunch of kids right now with my schedule without help. And so they believe in this power dynamic that they've seen on TV. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work like that. Basically, what happens is that if someone's earning a lot of money, then the other person, whether a man or a female, you know, what well, is usually the person who's not earning the money kind of gives up their life and becomes the homemaker. I do know some uh, instances where men do it, but most of the time it's the woman who does it, right? It, it's, it's just the rules of the game. And the rules don't have to be fair, by the way. The rules don't have to be fair. And so understand this. You're trying to say, well, I make my own money and it's not. Well, guess what? If you make your own money, stop looking for a guy who makes six, seven figures or high six figures because he doesn't give a fuck how much money you make. He gives a fuck that when he comes home after 17 hours of work, that he actually gets cooperation and relaxation at his house and feminine inspiration. And that's what Kevin Samuels says. Now, here's the final thing that really pisses women off with Kevin Samuels. And I understand why, because it's the harsh truth. And the harsh truth is that you do not qualify most of the time for the men you want. Men understand that they don't qualify for the women they want all the fucking time. Look, I gotta tell you the truth. When I was young, I love me some Holly Berry. Oh, Holly Berry was the end all be all, right? Before Rihanna, there was Holly Berry. I'm a little older than some of you folks. Rihanna, you know, you know, Rihanna is also a great example, but Holly Berry, Rihanna, Beyonce, Angelina Jolie, if you're talking about white girls, uh, you know, she she's up there somehow. I never liked Jennifer Aniston. I think she looks like a poodle, but some people like her. Uh you know, uh, if you're if you're talking about other races, uh, you know, uh, uh, Eva Longoria, all these women, these were like just dream women for the average man, right? Uh, the lady who played Jessica Rab Rabbits, uh, Kim Passenger, these were dream women for the average man. Well, guess what? The average man looks at that shit and realizes they can't have it. And what you do is you're satisfied with the woman you qualify for. Because as a man, we understand that the woman we normally qualify for is based around the amount of money we make and basically how we look and how we carry ourselves, right? The trick is, is that the more money you make, the less time you have to take care of yourself and perfect your body. If you're blessed with like this body that like you work out, uh, an hour a week and you're buff and you like never eat what you want to eat and you know you have plenty of time to plan your meals out then hey may you may at the height of your sexual prowess attract a lady but at the same time you know women if they're attracted to security then the amount of money you make kind of goes into that and that's just the truth and and if you say it's bullshit oh no it's not no it's not then why the fuck do you have old fat men with yachts with supermodels it's because they're attracted to the security of the money because they've figured out that hey i can be taken care of the way i want to be taken care of with that being said there's nothing wrong with that men understand that that's the trade-off hey i make more money i get a prettier girl i, I am uh, this is where i am in the marketplace women have a hard time realizing that there's women and I know some of these ladies, and they're great. You know, 180, 175, 200 pounds. You know, short, kind of big, beautiful in the face. But guess what? You're not going to fucking go date Denzel, a young Denzel Washington or a Brad Pitt. Because these men have options that exceed you. And so what he says is like, look, why are you looking for a man who makes six figures, which is like 6 7% in America? Why isn't a man who makes fifty five, sixty five thousand dollars $65,000 good enough for you? And this is my biggest problem with people in the way modern women talk. This is my biggest problem. You know, you see interviews all the time where women say, well, I just can't get with a guy who works a nine to five job. Just shitting on an average working class person, right? I need somebody who's doing media or hustling on a side. So hold on, let me get this straight. You ignorant bitch. What you're saying is that you want someone to risk their fucking livelihood, their life and their freedom to fuck you. Fuck you. That's right. That's a redundant phrase. Two fuck yous in a row. 
Why would you say something like that? And you know why you say it? Because you're ignorant and you're living in a fucking fantasy world. And at most times when you say this without makeup, you're a fucking four to a five. With great makeup, you're a six. I'm an eight with super makeup, with the perfect lighting, when everything's working for you. You're saying that. And just the mentality of you're saying that. You can't get what an average working class person, he's not good enough for you. And a lot of these ladies, their fathers are average working class people. And so their dad isn't good enough for them, to, a man of their dad's caliber. And obviously he's not because he didn't do a good job raising them. Because every real woman I know is pretty happy with a guy who makes 60, 75, $80,000 a year, bring home the bacon, brings the check home, fucking treats her good, helps her raise her kids. And, and, and sends the kids to college. And let's add another caveat to this. There's actually women with children who expect a man to come in and raise another man's child through all the stress and strive of having a baby's dad. And, and you know, and expect to do that, but actually think that they don't need to service this man and like stroke him a little when he's doing that and be thankful for it. And that's fucking amazing. And this is personally, not, not people that I associate with, but personally, I've seen relationships where a lady is actually mad at somebody who's raising their child and she's like, he's not doing good enough. And I'm like, holy shit, this man is raising a child from another man with his kid, raising them together, treating them good, making sure that they have everything they need, being a good man to them, how providing because he's not earning the money that you think you deserve to earn, you're thinking about leaving him. And that's what Kevin Samuels talk about. He's talking about accountability and realism to women. And unfortunately, in a social media age, they just don't have this. So what I think about Kevin Samuels, I don't think he's right about everything. I think sometimes he can come off like an arrogant asshole, an arrogant upper class rich asshole. But you know what? Maybe he is an arrogant, upper-class, rich asshole, but that does not mean he's not correct with his assessment about a lot of modern people and modern women, right? Now, I know I just kind of went in on the ladies. I will be releasing an episode about simping-ass men and men who aren't men and beta males, which if you look at it, I've talked about beta cucks in my material at the Happiness Podcast for the last two years, but I guarantee you, Nobody will pay attention to that shit and they'll come after me for this. I don't give a fuck. It's just the truth. And by the way, can you handle the tip? <laughs> Booty in your face.